If you're using Go High Level or thinking about using it, then you may be wondering how to import your funnels that are already set up in ClickFunnels into your high level account. Doing this is really easy, but it's also really important because Go High Level is such an all in one platform. You want to make sure to use as many of their features as possible. By keeping all of these different tools and assets under one roof, you are going to increase the chances that they're going to function as you've intended them to. You're also going to reduce the time spent troubleshooting by trying to get those third party integrations to work correctly and trying to figure out why they're not working correctly if something should happen. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, comment if you have questions or subscribe to my channel for additional Go High Level tutorials. Let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you exactly how easy it is to get your ClickFunnels funnels imported into Go High Level's platform. First step is to log in to your Go High Level account and navigate to the specific account that you want to put your funnels into. Then we are going to take a look on the left hand sidebar and navigate to the funnels and websites tab. And then we are going to click on that funnels button. That's going to bring us to our funnels screen. You also want to make sure that you're logged into your ClickFunnels account and that you have the specific funnel that you're looking to import pulled up as well as the way that it looks when it is actually set up. This is going to make sure that you know if there are any differences in your pages once you import them in. So the first step is we are just going to click on that new funnel button. We're going to give it a name. I'm going to call this real estate funnel and click create funnel. Then we're just going to see a blank screen. The first step is to go ahead and click on add new step. I'm going to give this a page, a name, and we're going to say opt in. I'm going to do a path that's just going to be the same opt in. And then we see this field that says import from ClickFunnels and this is optional. So if you are creating a funnel that's based on your ClickFunnels pages, this is what you're going to use. If you were not creating a page, based on a ClickFunnels page, you would go ahead and click on this create funnel step button. But because we are importing, we're going to hop over to our ClickFunnels funnel screen. We're going to make sure that we are on the step that we are looking to import. And then we're going to see this URL right here. We're just going to copy that. We hop back over to high level and plug that in. We're going to click off this checkbox confirming that we own this funnel or we have permission to use these assets and we will click on create funnel step. So it's going to go ahead, load in the account. It does not take very long, but then we're going to go ahead and see this funnel set up. There will be a few things that do not transfer over from ClickFunnels. One of them will be your forms and another would be your two step order forms. If you were directly selling products, there are a few elements such as the countdown timer that may look a little bit different when you import those over, but you do have the ability to go ahead and really just adjust the way that those visually appear. So when I look at this page, this was the preview from my ClickFunnels page. I can see that here in the middle, there was a form in ClickFunnels. You have individual form fields and individual button elements. However, in high level, we have forms that are created as a whole in the form builder tab that's located under the marketing tab on our left hand sidebar. So if you have not already created the form that you would like to use, that would be virtually the same form that you were using in ClickFunnels, you need to do that first, or we could go ahead, save this page, hop back over to the form builder, create that form, and then we could add it here. If we already have forms in the account, I'm going to click on that add element button and select the forms element. Then I can go ahead and I can select a form that will work. Because these forms are created as a whole, the button is included with them as well. So if you want to change the verbiage on that button, you'll also do that in the form section. You can remove the border. You can remove the background color from these forms. If you want it to look like this, where it's just those fields in that button, I'm okay with the way it looks here. Ultimately, I could go and adjust this if I wanted to, but I am fine for the sake of this tutorial. 
So when I hit save, you'll also see that my title, my description, keywords, author name, and social image are missing. So we would want to go ahead and fill those things out. Also, don't forget to go over to the settings tab, click on that tracking code button, and this is where we are going to put our Facebook pixel or any other tracking pixels or codes that we want to use to track this specific funnel. Now I'm going to hop out of here and I am going to create our second step. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare by clicking on this next step in my ClickFunnels funnel, highlighting that URL, hopping back over to my funnel and clicking on add new step. And we'll just call this next step and I'll do forward slash next step as well. And then I'm going to repeat that by pasting that funnel URL, clicking the checkbox and importing that next step. Now that I've done so again, it's going to bring this up. As you can see, the image is not showing up. The video, while there is a video player, is not always going to pull in. Then you can see that these different images here which if we go back to ClickFunnels and we click on that button, we'll see that these are just images of the home. So knowing what this page looked like originally will allow you to add back those elements really quickly. And then you can see that there's also a button that says download an entire list of homes under whatever dollars. So if we wanted to use this button and if we wanted to edit those images, we would simply start by clicking here. And this is ultimately a two column area in our ClickFunnels page. You can see that there's an image here and there is some text right there. So you could do this a couple of different ways. You could create one image where it's got an image to the right and text to the left. It looks like that's how this funnel was originally set up. If I wanted to do something where it was text and image separate, I would want to hover over this blue section, which is actually the row. I would click on that plus button <clears throat> and then I'm going to select a three column row. So I'm going to make this video section the same size. I'm going to make the text a little bit bigger and I'm simply going to click on the element, which is the orange outline. And I'm going to drag that down. Now this entire blue two column row, I can go ahead and delete that. I'm going to click on that little trash can button. Now right here, I would click on paragraph because that's what we had before on the other page. And then I would click on the image button because that's also what we had <clears throat> on the other page. So if I wanted to change anything about this text, I would just highlight it, make sure that that orange element box is highlighted. Then I can go over here. I can change the color of that text or anything else about it, including the padding, the spacing. So ultimately the funnel builder is virtually the same as you would see in high level. And if I close this out, you can see that my text shows up on that top line without being on that second line when this is open because it is dynamic. Now you can see that all of my sections are here for those images, but I would need to click on add element, image, add element, image. So it's really going to pull in as much as it can, but anything that was not pulled in, you can add back very quickly and easily by doing exactly what I'm doing here. We're going to do this one more time and then I would import those photos. So in order to do this video right here, I'm going to click on that orange box for the element. You can see that I have my video type. <clears throat> Then I'm going to paste my video URL for images. When we click there, we're going to see this image options with a URL and this button. I would simply click on this button. I'm just going to plug in an image right there. And there you go. Same process for all of these. You click on the image, you click this image button, and then you can upload an image if you need to right here, or you can just go ahead and use something you already have in your library. For this button here, we do have individual buttons as an option, even though forms are created as a whole. This is not a form, it's just a button. So right now I have the option when I'm selecting this element with that orange border, that's how I know it's an element. 
I can change the text right here. And then we have button actions. Here are the options. So whatever I want this button to do, I would select that. If it's a website URL, then you are just going to put that URL right there. Otherwise, select the option that best fits your specific needs. I'm going to hit save. I would also have that same option to do my SEO metadata. And then my tracking code would also want to place this here with my standard event code such as lead or complete registration or something showing me that if someone's on this page, an event has taken place. So now we want to go back to that very first page and we want to look at that form and make sure that this form being filled out is going to do what it is we've intended to do. So when I click on this form with that orange box around it again, I see this redirect action under the button actions. So I have use action from form builder. So when you create these forms, you do have the option to have this button either give a success message or send to a URL. So if that form is going to be used in various places, it's definitely a good idea to do a redirect URL in the form itself, or you could just say go to next step, which is what I'm going to do right here. Then I'm going to click save. I'm going to hop out of there. And then to get your domain into Go High Level, you've got to do a couple of things. So the first thing we would do is just make sure we've got all the pages like we want. Then we're going to hop over to Settings. We see this domain area and we can select the domain for our funnels. So this is just a demo template account that I have set up. So I'm not actually going to select one of them. Um, I will just for purposes of showing you, but I don't need one of these domains. But if I did need to add a brand new domain, I'm going to click on that tab and it's going to take me to the domain section, which you can also get to from this settings button at the bottom left of the left hand sidebar. And I'm going to click add a new domain. Now we can add the domain that we want to use. This step needs to be done wherever that domain was purchased. So you need to create an A record that points to this number. So you can just copy and paste that, make sure there's no spaces, or a C name record pointing to this value. Once you've done that in your domain hosting platform, you're then going to type this in and you're going to click add. When you've done that, you will see that domain in the drop down section of this funnel settings area. So for now, I'm just going to select this. If I wanted to add my favicon URL, I could either grab the URL of wherever it was previously hosted or I could just upload it into high level using that image button and then I could grab that URL from that image space and just plug it in right here so that your logo will show up next to the tab whenever someone is visiting that. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit save and then you will see that once we go over to these steps at the top of this step. So this becomes the domain for this specific funnel. So you will not see this unless you have gone to that settings tab, clicked on that drop down and either added your domain or first added your domain and then gone into that settings section. Now we have our ClickFunnels funnel imported into high level. It's set up virtually the exact same way and it's got its own custom domain. So there you have it. And if you guys have any additional questions on this, make sure that you let me know and stay tuned for additional videos and tutorials on the Go High Level platform. Thanks so much. <laughs>